today. Are you tired of living with stained and worn out carpeting? Does the den look like bears spent the winter with you? Bring us here. And so is Empire Today's half off your project sales. Starting now, but only for a limited time. Save 50% on a huge selection of carpet, hardwood, and laminate, standard padding and materials, and basic installation. Call the Empire Today half off your project sale hotline now. 1 855 385 0681. Empire Today's free in home estimates are easy and smart. Choose from high quality flooring in the rooms where you'll use them with your lighting so you can see the color best. We'll do the measuring, you do the selecting and saving. But first, you must do the calling. Everyone loves the half off your project sale. Even pairs. Call the Empire Today special hotline 1 855 385 0681. 1 855 385 0681. Empire Today. Select styles. Details at EmpireToday.com. Hello. Welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelley Overton. How are you? Welcome to the Astro Energy Show for Wednesday, April 15th, 2015, 415 2015. That's pretty cool. So I hope you're having a lovely day. Um, it is the um, <laughs> tax day. I know um, it's not one of my favorite days. How about you? Have you been doing okay? Um, Anyway, I'm in Orlando, Florida. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer here, and I want to welcome you. And I'm just entering in the show here on Spiritual Networks so people can find us. Have you ever been to Spiritual Networks? It's a really good um, website that you can connect to other people others who have the same spiritual interests that you do. So every week I like to... Oh, I'm sorry. I have a little something in my throat. Hang on. Well, that's what you get for having some almonds before you start the show. I think I was choking there. Anyway, um, Spiritual Networks is a nice... It's very similar, I think, in a lot of ways to Facebook. But um, most of the the people on there are interested in connecting on a spiritual level. So I really like it. I like um, promoting the show there and connecting to people. So if you're on spiritual networks and you hear or come to the show, let me know when I answer your call. So the phone number that you can't speak today, ah, the phone number for the show is 347-994-3365 if you would like to call in. And we are on every Wednesday at 5 o'clock Eastern. So if you're hearing this in uh, archive, which you can do, um, you obviously can't call in. But, oh, I don't know what is going on right now with me. So I apologize. Anyway, um So we're going to go over the chart, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Pluto retrograde. So uh, right now, actually, let me get rid of this chart. I have a chart up on the screen that is not the one I want. So I am going to do a real quick new chart for right now. Okay. So right now we have in uh, the Eastern time zone, it's well in Orlando. I should qualify it because Orlando, we have a two-degree Libra rising, and if you're even farther north, that can change. And if you're east, obviously it's going to change, or west, or, you know, any other point. So if you're down in the southern part of the U.S., this is what you're going to have. But the planets are still uh, pretty close to the same degrees. So two-degree Libra rising, and that means that we've got um, a lot of a lot of uh, balancing energy going on. And that's especially true with Venus opposing Saturn right now. So they're in opposite sides of the zodiac. Venus is in Gemini at 4 degrees, 59 seconds. And Saturn's at 0 degrees, excuse me, 4 degrees, 5 5 minutes. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I can't talk today. I can't think. Okay. So Saturn's at 4 degrees. 
degrees and 5 minutes retrograde, opposing Venus at 4 degrees 59 minutes in Gemini. And so there is a balancing act going on. We've got Venus, who obviously wants what she wants. And in Gemini, she wants what she wants when she wants it. And then the next minute, she wants what she wants when she wants that. So it's a little bit fickle, and she will continue to change her mind. And then Saturn is in Sagittarius saying, but wait a minute, we need to... uh, think about it a little bit more, and then act this way. So actually, Gemini is a thinker right now, and Saturn is the doer. But Saturn, of course, is retrograde, which means that he's internalizing a lot of the action he would want to take. And he's also withdrawing some of the action, some of the desires to take action, all the while getting more ideas, but feeling a little stopped up and helpless to do something about it. Where we are taking action is we are thinking more about money and doing something about that. Mars is in Taurus at 11 degrees in trine to Pluto. Pluto is going retrograde tomorrow. So right now he's stationed, which means he slows down his motion, getting ready to go retrograde in by perspective in the um, in the solar system. So Mars is saying, I want to do something more assertive and aggressive around money. And Pluto and Capricorn would normally, in trine, be saying, okay, let's do this. We're going to take action. This is the value of what you're talking about. Let's create the structure. But Saturn's retrograde and Pluto's retrograde are just about retrograde. So both Saturn, which rules Capricorn, and Pluto, which is in Capricorn, are now saying, This isn't going exactly the way I thought. And then, actually, I want to back up a minute. That being said, uh, Saturn in Sagittarius, while um, Venus in Gemini rules roads and construction of roads or things having to do with roads, transportation, Saturn in Sagittarius rules the larger system. So um, I find it really interesting here in Orlando. They are just starting the I-4 expansion. I heard it was yesterday, I think, Um, and it's going for six years. That means everything through the middle of Orlando on I-4, which is the main artery through town, uh, well, I should say, I consider it north-south, but it's actually northeast to southwest, over to Tampa, is going to be in upheaval for six years. So is this a good time for that? Personally, I would say not a great time to start a road construction job, which tells me it's probably going to be going on a lot longer than we think, but don't they always? So um, Sagittarius does rule long-distance travel, and so it can also affect flight schedules, planes, um, I don't like Venus in Gemini because Gemini rules um, is ruled by Mercury, and Mercury can mean uh, glitches and accidents. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is something going on with an accident coming up this week, but I will keep a good thought and knock wood that nothing happens. So um, Mars, getting back to Mars, Mars and Taurus, he's in trying to Pluto. So there is this deep desire to make shifts and changes regarding money and money systems, money structures, how we earn money, what we're doing with it, um, the economics that we deal with in our society right now. We're going to be seeing a lot of shifts. And uh, Mercury just went into Taurus, which uh, he's at two degrees now. So Of course, I haven't looked at the stock markets, but I would say there could be some fluctuation, although Taurus is the bull and tends to be, it's conservative on one side, but a bull market, ironically, is considered to be a good market from what I understand of economics. So if I'm wrong, that just goes to show you that I should stick to um, art (laughs) probably, but um, you know, uh, the sign of the bull, I mean, you know, Merrill Lynch that has the statue of the bull. And so there's definitely a connection between money and uh, the sign of Taurus because it rules the second house of money and possessions. And so 
Taurus being, uh, Mercury being in Taurus today and Mars being in Taurus. And of course, Venus just went out and Venus rules Taurus. She's in Gemini now. So she is going to be uh, wanting or desiring money from other people's investments. In this chart, which is, I'm going by, to Libra on the rising on the horizon, um, eighth house has Taurus ruling it. So that's other people's money. And then Venus just left that house. So um, as, for this, for the purpose of this reading, I'm going to say that um, Venus now is moving on to other ideas. And interestingly, because it, Gemini right now is in the house of education, there are a lot of educational opportunities coming up. And I think that we're going to be seeing um, a shift in the next month you know, with the information coming out about education. I know yesterday, and of course Venus just went in, I actually will look up the date for you. Let's see here. Sorry. Don't, I, you know, sometimes I have my, uh, all my stuff written out and sometimes I don't. So um, yesterday Mercury went into Taurus and Venus entered Gemini on Saturday at 11.28 a.m. Um, Eastern. So those all shifted, and so Mercury in Taurus means we're thinking more of money and money and possessions and all that. So I'm trying to see in conjunct Saturn. So there's going to be kind of a battle going on with this system over finances and and ideas around what we should do with money. It's about budgets, and this is on probably a larger scale because Saturn Saturn is – Anything from Saturn on in the Zodiac is going to be reaching more larger groups of people because Saturn takes two and a half years to go through a sign and every consecutive uh, planet will take even longer to go through a sign, which means it has that much more gravitas. So there's going to be um, a battle, an ideological battle over money and what to do with it. Now, Saturn in Sagittarius wants to uh, have a connection to foreign policy and foreign economies, but retrograde, it's going to be a stifling of that. You know, the voice is getting um, pulled back a little bit with the ability to actually move forward with foreign uh, foreign affairs, really. And then, um, oh, and of course, Hillary just posted, and I think Marco Rubio this week, both of them just said that they were joining the um, political arena for the presidential election, which is really interesting. And we can talk more about that at another date because there's going to be a lot to talk about, I believe. Um, And so that's really interesting. I did actually pull a chart for that, and I will talk about that probably in upcoming shows. The sun is at 25 degrees Aries, so he is getting ready to make a move into Taurus. So feeling the last bits of aggression and anger, and with Pluto retrograding, you can also believe that there's going to be some aggressive energy coming out. Every time Pluto goes retrograde or direct, especially in Capricorn, we see this bullying energy coming out, and um, even though... Uranus and Pluto are pulling apart from each other. They are still within one degree of a square. So there is still a little uh, back and forth between them. So sorry about that. That is a text message that I thought I could shut up, but apparently I can't. So let me just do that. Uh Uh-oh, and now my screen went to screensaver. So, So the last degrees of sun in a sign and any planet at the end degrees kind of makes it a little bit um well I know that we do it with the moon void of course which means that it doesn't connect to any other sign before it moves out of course that's not necessarily true with the sun because the moon will be going to the last degrees of Pisces before the sun moves into Taurus and the sun moves into Taurus let me just get you the exact date on Monday next week the 20th at 542 a.m. Eastern and 242 a.m. Pacific. So interestingly, um, not only does the moon get to the last degrees of Pisces, he gets, she, excuse me, gets, 
chi he I don't know. You know, I think of everything in the heavens kind of masculine except for Venus. So anyway, the moon gets its Luna, so it's feminine. But the moon gets to the last degrees of Pisces and the last degrees of Aries and Taurus because on Monday the moon enters Gemini and the sun enters Taurus. So they the moon goes through two more signs before he she gets to the last degree. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was the new moon at 28 degrees Aries, which is going to be right before the moon goes into Taurus. And I looked up the Sabian symbol. Now, ask me what a Sabian symbol is. All I know is it's a an Middle Eastern, I believe, um, process of defining every degree in the um the zodiac, so zero through three hundred and sixty, but it is broken down astrologically, so it goes thirty degrees through every sign. So the twenty eighth degree of Aries is a large disappointed audience. So I hope that's not the case for this show. But it happens on Saturday. So if you are planning on going to anything, well actually it's probably good Coachella wasn't next weekend. I think it was um last weekend. I don't know how long it lasts for, but I'm pretty sure it's wrapping up. So that's a good thing. But um, anyway, in degrees means wrapping up of an energy and the culmination of that energy. So that's what we will be seeing on Friday. But interestingly, it is also the wrapping up of the new energy, the new moon, the, um, you know, birthing energy, planting, planting seeds, um, you know, even though the new moon means that's when you start to plant seeds, interestingly enough, 28 degrees Aries is kind of an end ending of that. So I don't know that I would recommend planting anything this Saturday. I think I would wait until the moon went into Taurus because at that point, um, which is 5.31 p.m. on Saturday, so I would say Sunday is good for planting, because Taurus rules the earth, and that is what you do when you um, when you want to plant something. I'm just trying to find my chart. It disappeared here because, you know, the planets are not supporting me right now. Okay, so let's see. It's 16 after. So let's get to Pluto. Um, see, I, Okay, and the moon and the sun are, or excuse me, the moon and Neptune. See, I'm going to do this all day. The moon and Neptune are in the same part of the sky, but... He is also, uh, Neptune is also going to be going retrograde in June, which is not not very soon. But, um, you know, it's it's something I wanted to touch on because it's something that I was thinking about earlier. Like, you know what? I don't mention a lot of these major shifts until the day of. And I wanted to just kind of give you a heads up for that. And then the moon will be uh, squaring Saturn. Or uh, was excuse me was squaring Saturn, but he when he moves into Aries, he will be in trine to Saturn. So there will be some emotional um, ass- assertion, so to speak. Like, okay, now I'm feeling strong again because right now with the Moon in Pisces, we're feeling a little bit dreary, uh, tired, wanting to lay down, wanting to take a break, um, probably overwhelmed on some level with emotions. So. Okay, getting back to Pluto retrograde. So Pluto, when he goes direct, he goes through the houses and wherever he is in your chart, wherever he is transiting, he basically makes huge shifts in our lives. So it's one of those things where it can be very profound, like a volcano, like um, in our personal lives, like a house fire like um, somebody leaving our lives for good, things like that. Very profound, very gut-wrenching. But he also changes our ideology and our sense of values. So when he's in a sign, whatever energy of he's in, whichever sign, which is Capricorn, he takes on that as his domain, so to speak. So, of course, now he's in Capricorn, meaning the domain is structure, government, um, authority. And in square to a lot of the Aries energy, he can be really dogmatic and want to have his way. And generally, Pluto sees itself as right and righteous. And um, 
you know, again, Pluto rules Scorpio. So I know this <laughs> could be true on some level with the Scorpio rising. But that's because he weighs the good and the bad and he cuts away what he believes to be bad. So this is the energy he brings to the sun as he moves through the heavens. When he retrogrades, he has to pull back and look inward. So, of course, all the planets, when they go forward, they're externalizing, externalizing, externalizing. But as he retrogrades, it becomes more internal. And so it can be stuffed down. It can be more frustrating because you can't express this energy. So it's turned inward. And in society, that means that we can have, especially with Pluto, more um, like passive aggressive or um, energy directed inward, which can be self-defeating, um, you know, things like that. And we're also having to go back over what we thought we were doing when Pluto was going direct. So we were having to deal with this issue. It's cutting away something. It's changing and shifting the structure. And now we're going back over what we just cut away and then we're reviewing it and we may even feel a little insecure as to whether or not what we did has that value. You know, did did I have my ideas right? Was this correct? Were my feelings accurate? Especially with Pluto. Pluto is very deep feeling, um, very moody and brooding. And in Capricorn, he can really be kind of a little little jerk, I think, probably. Um, and especially because Capricorn rules government and overseeing bodies and uh, the authority figure, and it can be paternalism, um, we can see some of that taking place with those entities. So whatever was accomplished by our government recently, um, I think, Congress just passed a bill. I noticed I didn't see what it was about. I just saw the headline. Um, that could be second-guessed or it might not hold. Um, of course, the energy moving forward, um, you know, again, you deal with the shift and change. And now we're in the middle sections of um, this decant, which is uh, Capricorn, the 30 degrees of Capricorn. So now we're at 15. So the first degrees are Capricorn. The next degrees are Taurus, the middle degrees. And then the final degrees are Virgo. And Virgo is healing. So personally, I'm kind of waiting till Pluto hits 20 degrees. And then we can really start to heal from whatever the dogma was and ever whatever the stricture was of Pluto in the middle degrees and in the beginning degrees. So the beginning degrees of Pluto and Capricorn were now we're shifting and changing from whatever it was that you were doing, Pluto and Sagittarius, which was um, bringing out new ideologies and ideas and, um, you know, getting a little bit interested in foreign policy or a lot interested in foreign policy. Um, now we're moving into how are we going to make that happen? What are we going to do with it technically and structurally? And, you know, where are we moving towards ideologically and with our belief systems, with our ideas, and it wants to be very structured and very traditional. So it can be conservative, and now we're backing up and having to go backwards and look at our traditions, look at the conservative side of things and say, well, is this working for us? We just made some shifts, but now we're going back over those. And so we'll see that wherever it falls in our chart. We'll see that. And um, and then when he gets to the 20th degree and gets into the Virgo decant, then Virgo is about health, health care, healing, medical issues, and also the workplace and service. So those will be the issues Pluto will be focusing on. And right now, this is um, economics, the middle section's economics, whereas from 2008 to – actually, let me look that up while I'm talking. Um, let's see. So it has to be about – 10 degrees, so from 2008 until about 20, mid-2013, 20, 2014, where is it at? Okay, the end of 2013, we were dealing with um, really the structure of politics, um, bringing in the new energy, actually probably digging our heels in then and now. Um, a lot of this, I don't want to change. By the time Pluto gets to the end degrees of Capricorn, it will be very clear that there is a shift and change that isn't going away. And 
the dogma will have to change. But in the middle degrees, which we are at now, of course, the Taurus, Taurus is very uh, dug in. So we're going back over a lot of issues that we've had in the past and um, systems and organizational issues. And that happens also in our world with our chart as well. So hope that gives you a little bit more view of what's going on and that um, this next five and a half months we will be dealing with what we had seen in the last four or five months when Pluto went direct. And so, um, yeah, we're going to be going out, back over the last couple degrees. And But the difference is, and I wanted to, um, I thought about this before the show, is I wanted to mention, like, okay, what's the difference? Because Pluto will be there for around 12 years, and he goes retrograde every year for almost six months. What's the difference every year? Part of the difference is the degree he's in, like I just mentioned, but the other part is what's going on in the other planets while he's retrograde. So you have, you know, Uranus is no longer an issue. So last year Uranus was an issue because they were battling for control. This year Uranus is going direct. He's moving backwards. When Uranus goes backwards, um, you know, they're not in the same degree anymore. Pluto will go direct, then Uranus will go direct, and then they'll continue moving away from each other. So it's not an issue anymore. It's actually like now Uranus is getting degree by degree freer to move forward with his ideas and with the action he wants to take to be more autonomous. So a lot of the Pluto rhetoric in Capricorn is, um, you know, this is the structure and how things work. Why aren't you people getting on board with it? And Uranus is saying, yeah, I understand that that's the structure, but we want to change things and we want to try a new thing. And so it's it's kind of like, yeah, that's all well and good, but we've got this other view of things that's new and fresh and um, changing and dynamic, and you're more stagnant and stale. So um really as difficult as it is, especially for Capricorn people. And I know some, you know, Pluto's right on top of their sun. So they're having to deal with these issues of who are they? And this is everything I thought I was, but now this isn't necessarily working anymore. And I'm fighting constantly to try and get my point across and my view and my belief systems, which it very much is about belief systems. So it's kind of this challenge to uh, the belief system. And Uranus wants to continue moving forward, and he will um, now, free of Pluto's grasp, to make it a certain way as Uranus continues on through the last 14 degrees of Aries. Again, he moves forward through his energy, so it goes Aries, Leo, and then Sagittarius. So he's in the Leo section right now, which affects all those who are born with Pluto and Leo. So that's kind of the um, the 70-year-old's I think like 60, maybe around 60, 57, probably a little older than that, 60 to 72, somewhere in there is the Leo and Pluto and Leo generation. And they're feeling this because Uranus is really affecting that area of their chart and saying, hey, you know, it's time to get more creative. But at the same time, it's about leadership. It's about um, that generation where the dogma, the um, clarity of ideas, like the the contrast of the dogma, this is good, this is bad, is now getting challenged, and their view of leadership is getting challenged. You know, when they grew up, people in authority, politicians very much, um, this is what it was. You respected doctors, you respected teachers, you respected clergy, you respected uh, elected officials, and all of that, is getting challenged with Uranus and Aries and also by the generation just after that with Pluto and Virgo. So it's a really interesting dynamic we see as the planets are transiting closer and closer to new energies and also kicking up old energies. So that being said, I hope I didn't bore you and I'm, I hope you were able to keep up with me for just a little bit. And I'm going to take a quick break here and then come back to um, to our show. But let me just find the one I wanted, so many different options. Okay, let's try this one.
new CD, So Is The Day, can be found at randomactrecords.com. Okay, welcome back. My name is Shelley Overton, and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. And if you would like a reading by me, I would love to give it to you. You can reach me at astrologerangel.com. And I can be reached also on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and Tumblr. I'm everywhere. And I spend a lot of time on the computer during the day doing various things, including reading. So I would love to talk to you. I really can get into your chart much better uh, over the course of an hour. You can see that when I start really talking about it, it just kind of opens up something. So anyway, um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to start calls, I think. So let's just Take a call. Hi, who is this? 916. How are you? Hi, this is Diana. I'm good. How are you? Hi, Diana. Nice to talk to you. Have you called the show before? Yes, I haven't talked to you for probably a year. You've got me down as Mountain Diva. Okay, (laughs) I've got to put your name with that. Yeah, I've got you there because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, because I kind of scanned some of the uh, area codes and I'm like, I think that's Mountain Diva. (laughs) So I'm going to. Add wow. your name here <laughs> that way. So, okay. And I actually cool. am in Florida. If that makes the reading different, oh, I'm South Florida. Awesome. Near Fort oh, Myers, Lee Hall. Oh, okay. Wonderful. I came wonderful. back to see my daughter. Oh, nice. Okay. So, well, tell me what you would like to find out today. 
Oh, let's see. First off, I was going to say invest in me. Did you get in touch with that means? Other people's money. It's time oh, now. Yes. Invest in me. Exactly. Publish my book and publish my book for me. Um, and I'll give you a 10% profit. <laughs> well, there you go. I hope you're uh, oh, promoting that one. Okay, I've yes. answered my own question just by listening to you. Um, exactly. I don't know. Do you see, <laughs> do you see anything <laughs> popping out? <laughs> yeah, so the money uh, issues fall into the last degrees of your house of joint finances and then into education and spirituality and travel. So um, if you're looking for someone to invest, I think, uh, well, you just had Mars transit out of your house of joint finances in Taurus. So uh, he's within four degrees of your natal Mercury. And, of course, your Mercury, the Mercury now is in Taurus just coming up within 13 degrees of your natal Mercury. So you're going to have a Mercury return, which is awesome. And Mars is going to be on your wow. Mercury and your sun. Yeah. So there's a lot That's of energy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, sun, of course, is ego and self, sense of self. And he's in your natal chart. He's conjunct uh, Mercury. So, And it's in Taurus. So you need time. You need to take time to understand things. That's what that means. Taurus is like – it. <laughs> Taurus comes after Aries, which is very much, let's just do it, not think about it, and comes before Gemini, which is like, let's think about it and go here and go there. And Taurus kind of brings that earth energy, that pragmatism to it. So he doesn't move quickly, and he needs to know where he's coming from with everything. And I think all earth signs are that way. They're pretty set in what they want to do or they need to have a clear understanding of their domain before they really do something. So um, I was just looking here when Mars is going to get right on top of that energy for you. So, do you think uh, travel is good? It's almost well, time for me to hit the road again. But the way uh, you were talking about travel, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's because you're having a Venus return as well. Interestingly, Venus is within six degrees of your natal Venus in Gemini. Um, what kind of travel are you talking about? Long, Like long-term or temporary? Which are you um, wanting to do? Spiritual travel. Spiritual travel. Well, yes, yeah, but... Well, thank you. You know, um, I'll find out what the outcome is when I go. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, Saturn... <laughs> Saturn is the spiritual travel sign. Uh, yeah, excuse me, Sagittarius. And Saturn's in Sagittarius in your house and home and family. So it's like you, I mean, yes, Saturn going across literally one degree away from your cusp, it just went into um, your house and home and family. So I don't know if you've been moving or wanting to move, but it's there. And, um, yeah, with Saturn and Sagittarius, it's saying I want to move, but hold on, I have to take a sip of water. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, I think I'm okay. Let's see if we if we can get through this. I had a little dry throat there for a second. Um so Saturn just got a taste of that energy of wanting to move your house and wanting the freedom to travel, you know, with regard to the home. Yeah. And and then he's going to transit backwards and he's starting his journey back into Scorpio, which gets you on the other side of the cusp back into the book back into the writing and everything. So I do think that if that's what you've been working on, I think it will be um, backed. You'll have some money coming, but it might take until Saturn goes direct and gets back into your house of home and family, which becomes the money associated with writing. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Mm-mm. Because home and family was never one of my strong... You know, because my right. family didn't like my spirituality. Right. Exactly. I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. Um, yeah, because you I have feel to... like when I go to Indiana, it's like going straight to jail. But, you know, it may be different now. <laughs> you're you're not the only one I've heard say that in my lifetime. <laughs> I used to have a neighbor who said she never wanted family? to go to jail. Family? Family? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to jail now. Well, um, yeah, because Sagittarius. Um, most of the sign of Sagittarius is in your house, home, and family. You've got from three degrees to to 29 in the house, home, and family. And that's the wanderer. You know, you're the vagabond. And going back oh, I've in. have done that. Yeah, going, well, because now I with that Saturn. I for two years. But yeah, I, Saturn, I, I would do it again. That's something I love. Oh. Saturn I wasn't your family. 
Sorry. What was that? What about being your family? The vagabond type traveling, the gypsy type traveling, that's more me. The traveling yeah. to see family, that hasn't been me, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to scratch it off. <laughs> well, you're like I said, you're, you've got Saturn just in home and family, so you've had a taste of what it's going to be like the first three months of this year. Then he's going back to some of the issues that you had with um, the Scorpio energy. And you have Saturn and Scorpio natally. So it is about mm-hmm. earning a living through, uh, through teaching or through finding out information and expressing it to other people. So if you are writing a book, that's part of your life. That's you know. So I think that with Saturn going back into Scorpio, it's going to give you the last bits of of understanding of what to do to get that going. And mm-hmm. um, and then you're going to live through this one more time with Saturn going into Sagittarius, um, well, at least in the near future, because it'll go around again in 28 years. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, from, yeah, for right now, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> but, um, I mean, potentially you could be, but if you're not, I mean, I totally understand because I've gone through the Saturn and Scorpio going, I don't ever want to live this again, but I have long livers in my family, so I think I probably will. And hopefully I'll be no, um, Grandma, you know, 94. somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, so you might. <laughs> but it'll, wow. you'll be so old to be like, ah, I don't care. I've done this before. I don't care. Um, so what's going on is Saturn's going to transit your house, home, and family coming up in the next two and a half years. And when he gets over into Capricorn is when you kind of wrap up that family story. And that's when the structurals will change. And, you know, all that dogma that, you yeah. know, disconnect with family members. This is going to be the story for the next two and a half years that, you know, you're having to basically, for the second time, because you had it 30 years ago, you're going to have to own how you see the world. And right now, uh, mm-hmm. well, just now, Saturn opposed your Venus, and of course, Venus is in the sky right now, so this is a big story for you about uh, the vagabond, because Venus and Gemini is the one who could get in a car and just travel and travel all over this country and just go and drive, and, you know, Mars mm-hmm. and Gemini, too, and you have Jupiter and Gemini, so Jupiter rules long-distance travel in Gemini, which rules short-distance travel, so there is that that's part of your career, like, is that that communication, the education, and travel. It's all part of who you are mm-hmm. and your makeup. And if you focus on that for your career and your life, you're going to be happier. Mm-hmm. And as far as the family, you know what, again, Mars and Capricorn, you've got Pluto going through Capricorn now in the house of children, creativity, romance, connectedness to others, relationships. Um, I see, that. well, the fifth house is relationships. It can be friends as well. But, um, you know, marriage and partnership is relationships, but it's a different type. It's more of a commitment and a lifetime thing as opposed to just like the friendship um, relating. This is more about relating. What do you have in common with other people? So Pluto Mm -hmm. is bringing up all these issues. And interestingly enough, Mm -hmm. um, he's saying you do have some of this energy in your own life and you're seeing it in your family because as long as you reject what you see and say, that's not me, then you're going to keep going through it. So the quickest way through it is to say, okay, what about this resonates with me? And then once you own what resonates with you, you don't have to fight it anymore because it's like, oh, I know what this is. And that's why you keep attracting. It's a little hook in your karma Mm -hmm. saying, oh, it's not me. It's you. You're that way. And then you go, wow, you know what? I really do like a certain structure to come back to. I like to have a family unit that's there so, you know, I can touch base. And that may be all, and I got chills when I said that, that may be what this is for you. It's like, you know, they don't like your spirituality, but you need the security of a family to be there, just knowing that they're there so you can go back out again. You know, that might be what it's. And now my daughter's there too. That yeah. was the whole thing about me coming here was getting her prepared to go back to be with family. Cause right. She lived in Florida all those years, through high school and until her husband died. And I mm-hmm. came back when her husband died. But the house was going into foreclosure, so I'm definitely leaving in two months. But I just didn't want to really go through the family path. I just wanted uh-huh. to go, like, back out west. Yeah. Now, is, <laughs> so it your house? Happen. is it your house, her house, your parents' house? Whose house is foreclosed? being foreclosed it's on. her house okay yeah well has she tried to short sell or or work a deal with them 
Um, they're because they got suddenly sick. They had the bird flu and her husband died. Oh my gosh. They were they were not prepared. They had just bought another house and had just bought another business. So they had two businesses mm-hmm. and two houses. That was too oh. much to sustain and, and yeah. they owed too much they owed too much because they jumped in the borrowing, but when you're not sick mm-hmm. And you've mm-hmm. been in a business 15 years, you think you got it made, because 15 years is like the hump point. Well, at the right. 15th year, they both almost died. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so That's crazy. It, oh, it was definitely his karma she was living, because mm-hmm. him, him and two of his brothers and his mother, his mother died, his brother died, his brother died, then he died. It was definitely time for that family to, mm-hmm. and my daughter lived through all that. Oh, uh, so yeah, she got built back up, and she's living with her dad now in Indiana with the other ninety members of my family. <laughs> the other ninety jail, the other ninety jail guards. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, what um, I want to tell you definitely, you've got the the desire to travel. I think that you're going to be going back over what it is the deep uh, issues around whatever if you're going to write or if you have written. You know that mm-hmm. the educational side of your your life and really uh, wrapping up whatever it is you're doing with a career there before you uh, come back and focus on, you know, this. And there is travel, lots of travel. I mean, Gemini, no doubt about it, is travel. And if that's what you're looking to do, um, I don't really like Saturn retrograde in Sagittarius. If you're going to do travel by car, I would say, yeah, sure. If you're going to do by plane, um, wait a little bit until – until Venus gets out of the orb of Saturn, which would be even a couple weeks. Oh, okay. Well, no, it won't be by plane. Yeah. I'll be okay. Again. It will be what? I'll, I'll be coming up 27, so I might call you because I have to go through Sebring where my where my okay. aunt lives. Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> hey, have you ever gone? Um, I won't take very long, but I don't know if you even know about. They have a place that you can sit for stones in Sebring. Have you ever gone there? No, I didn't know that. Huh. It's on 27. It's called the Green Man. And you Ooh. just pick out your own bucket and pay for whatever size bucket you want, and you go sifting. That's so cool. I usually get some rubies when I go through there. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to look into that. That's, that's <laughs> okay. I have gone to Sebring, but I do know somebody who lives down there. And um, that would be a cool trip to do, just, you know, because I need to get out, too. The Gemini energy mm-hmm. in my charts wanting me to travel a little bit too. So um, okay. anyway, well, well, it was good talking you. to you. Yeah, let me know how yeah. it goes. Okay. I will. Great. Thank Take you care so much. Okay, thanks. Talk you to you too. soon. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, let's see who we have here. Six seven eight. Hi six seven eight. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Is this Regina? Rona. Rona. Okay. Hi, Rona. How are yes. you? You already said you're doing good. I'm, doing I'm sorry. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. we got a few people with your prefix. So I wasn't sure, but what can I do for you today? <laughs> well, I'm taking a big test on the 25th of this month, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been studying for it. I've already failed it one time, and I only have two other times to take it, but I have to take it before the 27th, or mm-hmm. my job is in jeopardy. Okay. So I wanted to see what do you think uh, the chances of, of me passing on the tw- – actually, it's the 24th of April. April 24th? Okay, let me just yes. do a real quick um, chart. So where are you at if I do that? I'm in where? Indiana. Indiana? Oh, uh, just I'm in Indianapolis. Indiana. Okay. But uh, the test is actually in Lafayette, Indiana. Oh, Okay. I'll just do it for Lafayette. Okay. I'm sorry, Lafayette, Indiana? Yes. Oh, okay. I just, because my mind heard Louisiana or went to Louisiana. It went to, it went to a Paul Simon song, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, so anyway. <laughs> so let me just put that up and we'll see what we get here. Okay, so you've got a test that you're going to take on April 24th. And Venus is in Gemini still, which is... Uh, mentality. What is the test regarding? It's uh, to get a broker's license. Oh, for um, real estate kind of thing? No, for like oh. stocks and bonds. Oh, okay. Well, that still works because um, Mars is going to be at 17 Taurus and Mercury is at 19 Taurus. 
So, um, and this is late in the day, so the moon will be right in sextile, which is a positive thing. So I think it's going to go well if it's about that, definitely. And Venus, Venus is uh, right up there in Gemini, which is clarity of thought. And uh-huh. she's sextiling Uranus, which is also uh, clarity of thought. So that looks good. Um, there's a Pluto opposition, but that's past, I think. Well, but it, what time of day are you going to take it? Do you know? 10.30. Oh, you know exactly. 10.30 oh, in the awesome. morning. Okay, wonderful. Let me just look at that. Okay. And I'm also going to do a connection. I'm going to, I just brought it up by itself, but I want to put the two charts together real quick here and see what's going on with the two of them. So make sure I have the right information and hang on a second. Okay. Sorry, I was pulling up a chart and it's like, no, it just doesn't want to let me do it. I don't know why. Probably because I don't have a name in it. So hang on one second. Sorry to my audience listening attentively. (laughs) Okay, there we go. Now we can do it. April 24th. Okay. So... Um, is this something – now, this is something that you really um, desire? Or yes. Or is it just something that – okay. just want to make sure. You've got Venus in the 12th house, so there's something that could be hidden on the test that would definitely study really well. Okay? Okay. Um, yeah, there's definitely yeah. a lot of trick questions on it. Yeah, exactly. Venus is in um, – is the ruler of Taurus. It's about money. And you have planets in Taurus. You have Sun, Mars, and Mercury in your chart, and then your natal moon is in Taurus. But um, Venus in your 12th house in Gemini means that there's something that you aren't aware of. Like there's there's more than one thing on it, and you just, you know, you could be like, oh, I, I'd study this but not that. And, you know, so just uh-huh. really do a really thorough job with that. But, you know, they – there, uh, the moon is in positive aspect to it. It's in the first house, so that's good. And actually, interestingly, the moon falls literally right in sextile between Mars and Mercury. Mars is at 17 Taurus, and moon's at 18 Cancer, which is right next to it. And then right after that is uh, Mercury at 19 Taurus. So, yeah, they're they're kind of working in tandem. Mercury is thought, and Mars is action. So I think that's going to be good for you. I see positive energy Great. going there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I give it a thumbs up, so I wouldn't worry about it. And Uranus is up there in career, too. Again, that's, like, really strong energy, you know, popping and clicking there for career and taking action. Okay? Great. Well, I'm going to keep studying until that day. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have Neptune in the house of uh, higher education and also, you know, any educational energy, and your Mercury is up there in Pisces. So that energy is – so go with your intuition, very okay. like go with the, and again I it's interesting because I actually had to talk to the school about my son at one point about taking tests and the lady who talked to me said that guys what was it guys do worse on tests I I don't know one of the genders did worse because they oh girls do worse and guys don't second guess as much and when you go with your first instinct that you know that's what they say about taking tests is go with your first instinct because you end up second guessing and getting it wrong so um with your Neptune right there in the house of higher education um i would and you have natal mercury up there in pisces and mars in pisces i would definitely say go with the intuition go with your gut feeling okay. on the and but study really well for the hidden things okay i definitely will thanks so much for your help you're welcome my pleasure Talk to Have you. a great night. Too. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Okay. Let's see. We've got 951. 951, are you there? Yes, Hello, nine... hi. Hi, Nathaniel. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So what's going on in your world? Oh, well, I'm just uh, kind of cleaning up and trying to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, I think that's good. <laughs> yeah. Probably the sooner the better. So are you going on vacation? Or are you getting are you moving or what exactly are you up to? I I'm just getting rid of some clutter items and that kind of stuff. Good thing to do. Yep. Pluto yeah. and Capricorn wants to declutter, absolutely. So what can I do for you today? Um, just a general uh, message. I'm looking for some financing, okay. possibly. 
Okay. Well, right now, Mercury and Mars and Taurus are right on your Sun and your Venus. So you've got a lot of Taurus in your chart, and so it's but it's hidden. Okay. So you've got some. Probably, I would say there's funding there, or there's some possibilities. But um, Venus is literally three degrees away from going into your first house, which means she's bringing money, but she is going to bring it when she comes out into the open. Right now, it's being it's kind of like percolating behind the scenes okay. along with mercury and mars they're they're working on it behind the scenes and again because it's the house pisces rules it tends to be slow and not necessarily out in the open and mercury and mars uh in well in taurus taurus is also rather slow about getting things going even though it is money so um, if you, again, when I see this, I tell people, look to your dreams for clues as to what's going on. Um, you know, do meditation and creative visualization. And I think that by the time Mercury and Mars get into Gemini, it's going to be much better for you. So even though um, Mars is in Taurus, let me see, Venus is there until the end of, the end of Venus in Gemini is the 8th. And then she goes into Cancer, which is your house of money. So coming up in May, it's going to be a lot better, I think, for you. And then Mars goes into Gemini. Let's see, you have seven-degree Gemini rising. So let's get Mars. Mars is the 23rd of May. And also right around then, you'll have Sun going into Gemini as well. So I think May is going to be your time for uh, a lot of the money coming your way. And then into June as well, because, of course, all those plans go into Cancer, which rules your house of money. And your money, actually, interestingly, is ruled by the moon, so it is very changeable. And right now, the moon is in Pisces, so everything you're asking me about has a Pisces energy to it. And the moon is it just went past Neptune in your house of career. So it's definitely about the intuitive and about the hidden. And so you're going to want, and of course, um, moon going into Aries will also help, which happens, I think, the day after tomorrow or tomorrow afternoon. Um, let me just look real quick here. I'm all over the place with my book. <laughs> this book, I go to the back to find the ephemeris, and I go back to the date to find the moons. So um, let me just see real quick here. What did I just say? Moon in, in Aries. I it's going to go to Aries. Yeah. It's going into Aries. No, that's Taurus. So tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow at 5 o'clock in the evening. So... That also could, it, it's more assertive, you know, the moon in Aries is going to be more assertive right now. The moon in Pisces tends to be like, okay, that's fine, you know, I'm not going to rock the boat. And when he goes, when she goes into Aries, then she's more like, okay, now I'm going to be more assertive. Now I'm going to say, hey, I need some attention here because the midheaven, which is the ruler of your house of career, is about um, getting the attention, but with Pisces, you're much more behind the scenes. And then when energy, you know, moon, any of the planets go into your 11th house, that's money from career. So the moon could also, but for you, the moon in Aries is about selling yourself. And right now the sun is in Aries, which is also about self. And then Uranus is about, I can do it myself. So a lot of it is saying, you need to promote yourself. It's about marketing. It's about selling yourself. It's about putting yourself out there and saying, hey, this is what I do, and tell people what you need. And then, of course, the sun goes into Taurus and hits your natal sun, your Venus, your Mercury, and all the other planets shift to Gemini. It'll be much more fruitful time for you, especially coming into the first house and the second house. And you know, and then having the sun go into Taurus, which rules money, it's going to be much more May and June for you. Okay? All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And um, you're wrapping up some issues at work, too. And I think that I don't know if you want to change jobs, but I think you're going to have opportunities for some um, some type of partnership. I, mean, yeah, I don't know if I, I told you I, that before. But, uh-huh. uh, I didn't know you, you didn't mention that. That's a good thing because yes. they, they, he said he was going to let me go or replace me last week and stuff. And I was just – kind of slow and I didn't do a lot of my patrols and it's under minimum wage job it's you know oh, under mercy. the tape oh I yeah see. it is mm-hmm. and uh you know and they, I couldn't believe the guy you know would you know, say say all that like well you know you're not even paying me you know minimum wage right. this is illegal on your end right. you know right and you know well it's just, coming uh, and 
I think that there's something coming from family. Jupiter is going forward now. He's going to go into your house, a home, and family. It's about relating. It's about creativity. And it's also life-changing. You've got Jupiter coming up um, in August. It'll be on your on your Pluto making a major life change around family. And who knows, could be uh, children of some sort uh, coming in too. And then you've got Saturn transiting into your house of marriage and partnership, and then and then you'll have a Saturn return in about a year. So there's a lot going on with partnership and, you know, calling your own shots, making your own way. I think it's time, if you were thinking of doing something for yourself, it's time to start thinking more seriously about that. The show's about to end, and so I've got to go, but um, call back and or, you know, get a reading. Hey. We can do more about it, okay? Hey, thanks so much. Have You're a welcome. great day. Oh, great... good talking to you. Bye-bye. Yeah. You too. Bye. Take care. And to everyone else, um, look out for that Pluto shift, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelley Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy, or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com.